Nick, back working with Jeannie. What's it been like so far, the second go around? Well, I've always enjoyed working with Jeannie, and uh, it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to do so. What sparked it? What led you guys to reunite? Uh, Jeannie just got in touch with me, and uh, we had dinner and chatted. And after a little while, we went out on the practice courts a few days later, and things have worked out since. I asked her if she regrets that you guys split up, and she said, I feel like it was probably for the best. I had to learn some things. Do you sense a growing maturity in her now that you're working with her again? Oh, certainly. Look, it's not easy. They're, they are thrust into stardom at a, at a young age. They've got a lot of things going on and uh, a lot of pressures and expectations. And so I think for the most part, she's handled it very well. I'm very proud of her. She says that it's like you're in her mind. You just know her so well. Is it? Do you feel that way? Like, does she know you that well? Or how would you describe the relationship? I don't know that I'm in her mind. I, the, the point is with any of the athletes, you have to be able to empathize with them so that, you, and they need to know that you understand where they're coming from. And it's very important that what you work on and why you work on it is important to them. So you have to explain and show them why this is significant to them and their career. And then when you have that done where they, they buy into it, they'll work really hard for it. Understand that any one of the great athletes, any one of the great performers have a very strong will. And that's one of the things that makes them great. And so you want to work with that. You never want to work against that. When you and Jeannie were together in 2014, it was an incredible season. You obviously weren't working with her last year. Watching from afar, were you surprised that she went through the struggles that she did? Not terribly surprised uh, because there were so much expectations and she was pulled in a lot of different directions. Uh, I felt uh, bad for her for a while there. It was not, uh, I didn't enjoy seeing her lose like she was losing, but you know, she's recovered uh, from, you know, those losses. She's starting to turn a game around. I'm very pleased with the development over the last uh, six weeks. Her game has really come along a great deal. How did you assess that first round match? It was, I think, a lot more straightforward than many observers at least thought it was going to be. Well, I never say that it's straightforward. There was a great deal of preparation work that went into it. Jeannie, much to her credit, has worked extremely hard and has been very diligent. And at any of these Grand Slam events, you have to dot the I's, cross the T's, every detail, and you have to have the subtle distinction between focusing on everything you can control and zero in on that and have the courage to let go of all the things you can't. And so that helps create flow in the athlete so that they can go out and be everything they can be. Once they get consumed with thinking about results, trying to guarantee the results, trying to guarantee appeasing everyone else. That's when uh, a great athlete, a great performer, plays with a little fear and anxiety, and that's not, that's makes it impossible for them to play up to their potential. So all Jeannie's doing is focusing in on being the best she can be. She's the, she's the great talent. She's the genius out on a court. As all these top world-class players, they achieve almost a genius level at their, their art form. And she's at that level. It's a matter of helping them to be able to bring that out on a more frequent basis. Just being around her, she seems, I don't know, looser or, I don't know, made peace with some of the issues she's had in the past. She's been very open talking about her struggles. Are you sensing that she's maybe gotten over a mental hurdle? Well, I think it's a maturing process, and I have great respect for Jeannie. I always have, even since she was a, a little gal. And, you know, she's very serious about becoming a great player, and she is just constantly maturing. I think uh, she should be really pleased with herself. I think she's handling things extremely well, and I'm here to just try to uh, assist. Tamiya Bishinsky, number eight in the world, uh, made the semifinals last year. What's uh, Jeannie have to do to be successful in this match tomorrow? Well, Jeannie is well aware of every aspect of this gal's game. We've gone over that. So there will be no surprises for Jeannie when she goes on the court. It then turns around to Jeannie focusing in on what she does and executing extremely well. She will respond, adjust, and adapt accordingly uh, to what uh, this gal uh, throws at her. But it's really about Jeannie being totally absorbed in the moment and performing the way she's capable of performing.
Is there a framework for how long you guys are going to work together? Is it an open-ended thing, tournament to tournament? Uh, how would you define it? Well, I'm here at the French. <laughs> uh, that's one way of uh, saying it. Now, uh, she, we, we were told or there was speculation she may have hurt her left wrist. Is Health-wise, how is she doing? She's uh, 100% right now. And working off, you've been working, practicing at an off-site uh, 30 minutes away. Uh, what is the advantage of that? There's some construction here. Obviously, it can be hard to get a practice court. Well, there's no real mystery about it. Like, for example, today, we there's no chance to get on site for practice. At the local practice center, the one right around the block, we couldn't get on till 3 o'clock because other matches have got to have warm-ups. So we, we are forced to go off-site and... Uh, we went to the, the racing club, which is beautiful, and we, we practiced the appropriate amount of time. So, Nick, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for your time. It's a pleasure.